Now, let's see. Where was I? Hmm. I, I wonder which way I ought to go. Stumbling into the wonderland of conspiracy theories can become a convoluted and time-consuming journey where one will encounter some very curious characters with some very peculiar ideas. The world of moon landing hoax theories has its own cast and, of course, its own ubiquitous self-appointed guru. Lose some oh. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I, I was... People like this are always more than willing to offer directions when they have no idea where they're going themselves. But I just wanted to ask you which way I ought to go. Well, that depends on where you want to get to. Oh, it really doesn't matter. As long as I can... Then it really doesn't matter which way you go. Sir Mildred Pierce sent me a link to a video made by Jarrah White about a year ago where he claims, well, he can tell it better than I can. On Apollo 14, just before he climbed back inside Lunar Module Antares, Alan Shepard allegedly took these two snaps of the crescent Earth seen from the moon's surface. These two images are of great significance because they show not only the Earth, but the planet Venus as well. It has become a trump card used to try and prove that the lunar landings were real. Our prolific moon hoax crusader is not off to a very good start here. First, he makes no attempt to explain why he thinks faked photographs would have Venus in different places. Is he suggesting that his skill in observation, using simple graphics programs, is better than NASA engineers' skill at creating credible fake images? It wouldn't surprise me, as conceit is the primary attribute of most conspiracy theorists. He also fails to mention that there were nine such images taken by Shepard, and they all show Venus. Next, and I think most damaging to his claims, is that this discovery of Venus in these images wasn't made until 2007, 36 years after Apollo 14, by a user named Data Cable in the ApolloHoax.net forum. If this was such a big trump card for NASA, how come they never played it? Maybe it's because this deal got a seven no trump bid, and this was NASA's hand. These pictures are just more, very strong evidence that we really did go to the moon. In this case, mainly because NASA was not even aware that Venus was in these photographs. This is Venus photographed from the moon, and Jera makes a very amateurish error in revealing this alleged discrepancy. He tried to match up the two pictures and make the Earth line up the best he could by eyeball, and then when there was a difference in the position of Venus, he concluded that it was carelessness on the part of the people who hoaxed the photograph. Since the Earth appears somewhat different in these photos, due to varying degrees of light saturation on the film, it is very difficult to get the two images to line up exactly. Using the embossing feature may make things stand out more, but it also changes the characteristics of edges. It introduces a slight degree of error that Jera has not accounted for. While these two images of the Earth appear very well aligned, an error of two or three degrees would be hardly noticeable. This tiny rotation of the Earth, however, would have a significant effect on the apparent position of Venus. Using Jera's own embossed images, I am able to freeze Venus with only a very slight change in the rotation of the picture. Notice that the matching of the Earth in my two pictures looks just as good as it did in Jera's. Jera must have failed to account for the very simple fact that the camera changed tilt slightly between pictures. 
Looking at a magnification of five of the nine pictures Shepard took, we can see a significant difference in the tilt of the camera. I have made no rotations here. So you can't just lay one on another and expect Venus to be in the same position in all of them. Here are the five pictures I just used in order of camera angle. No adjustment has been made to the rotation and you can see how the position of Venus is different because each one is at a different angle. Let's examine this using another approach, again with Jura's own embossed views. Watch these two images, masking out the other distracting objects. This Earth looks very good in both images and Venus changes position. Now to reveal a secret. Both of these images were the same photo. I made very slight rotation and size adjustments. In other words, it is bad practice to project a line from an imprecise source and expect the result to be precise. Using a virtual simulator known as Celestia, we are going to try and recreate the shot. At first, they seem to be in the right place. But when we compare them to the official Apollo 14 photographs, there's a problem. Yes, there is a problem. And, as I mentioned before, it is your critical error in assuming that you can adjust the position of the Earth to be precise to the degree that Venus moves in the picture. Although the phase and position of the Earth are the same, Venus is clearly not in the right place and is off by thousands of kilometers northeast. Your same amateurish mistake as before, which is why you should leave this sort of analysis to the professionals. You cannot guarantee that you have placed the Earth in precisely the same position and angle in both of these pictures. They are too different. No one with any analytical aptitude would make such a premise because they would realize that any conclusions they draw from it would be inconclusive. You go on to do the same thing and make the same mistake with the second image. At face value, Venus appears to be in the right place, but upon closer inspection, we find that they still do not match up. All of this, of course, depends on your premise that your rotation of the image in Celestia was precisely correct. This would get you a D in a high school science paper. I should know. I used to teach high school science. Now I'm going to demonstrate how you should have done it. First, you start with the unaltered NASA photograph. Venus is a little harder to see in it. Then you take the Celestia image and you adjust it to make the best fit that you can. Size and rotation can be changed. Horizontal and vertical ratio cannot. Now compare the two and see if anything looks like it's out of place. Venus is rock solid and the Earth is a good match considering the overexposed image is thicker than it would be if it was properly exposed. Once again I have misjudged how long it would take me to deal with a hoax claim. Considering all the errors Jera makes in his video about the Venus photos in Apollo 14, it will require two videos to adequately deal with all of them. But I don't want to go among mad people. Oh, you can't help that. Most everyone's mad here. <laughs> if the people here are like that, I, I must try not to upset them.